Thank you so much. The stage is yours, Absolutely. sir. Absolutely. Good afternoon. Ooh. Good afternoon. How's everybody doing? Great. My name is Mark Zogden. I'm going to talk to you today about the power of branding. All right? Everyone in this room who's been a speaker today has been phenomenal. I guess you can sit on everything from Kate to, you know, to Mike to Will to hear some great things. And everything that they're telling you is spot on. What I'm going to do, though, is tell you how if you learn how to own your story, learn how to actually just talk to people with authenticity, talk to people and be real. Everyone thinks on social media you have to be this fake person. You have to show everything is great, everything's glamorous. Well, we all know in reality that's not true. Every one of us has had a struggle. Every one of us has had an issue in life. And you probably are thinking, well, if I share that issue, it might show some weakness. And in my life, for the last six years, sharing my story, my vulnerability, and being honest with people has helped me build a multiple six-figure business and has helped me bring in some great people on my team that are sitting right back here with me today. Now, what is branding? The promotion of a particular product or company by means of advertising and distinctive design. If you want to sell something to people, you have to create a brand and you have to advertise and market that brand efficiently and consistently. I heard Kate talk about it earlier. If you're going to do LinkedIn for a week, 10 days, and you don't get any type of success and you quit, why are you bother taking the 10 days? Why even start? I've been on LinkedIn for four years, networking, growing, and now within the last probably I'll say about 12 months, consistently people now know me as a guy that can help bring value to them. But it's taken me years, not days, not weeks, not months, years. If you don't want to put the work in, then do not expect to get the results. But this is what branding is all about. You are the brand. Plain and simple. People say, well, my company does this. My product does this. People don't buy your company or your product. They buy you. If they like you, they will work with you. Your product is just an extension of who you are. That's all it is. That's all it is. When I come to speak on stage, wear a suit. Kate speaks, she wears a professional outfit. It's all about what you look like to people and how you carry yourself. If you're trying to sell a million dollar product but you're dressed like, you know, a thousand dollars, don't expect to sell that product. Don't expect to sell the product. People are going to look at you and say, you are an extension of the brand. So if you want success, ladies and gentlemen, you have to have everything that is part of your brand reflect that, plain and simple. Now, this is someone that I have known for now going on about a year and a half, Mel Robbins. She is one of the most successful keynote speakers in the world. She has worked consistently, tirelessly, every day to grow her brand for her speaking business, for her coaching business, and now she has Amazon, has made her a brand ambassador. She has her own television show up in New York City. Seven to 10 years ago, she was struggling from having a really bad business deal in a restaurant with her and her husband. And she talks about it all the time. She owns it. She's vulnerable. And because of that, if you want her, she just raised her speaking fee now, $85,000 for an hour. That's her price point. She just raised her price point last week. But this is what she's done. She has branded herself. Every day on social media, she's posting something, a video, an interaction, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook. Every day she's posting. So if someone who's charging $85,000 for the hours posting on social media every day, why aren't you if you're not? But again, it took her years to build. Not months, not days, not weeks. All right, any questions on that? 
Authenticity creates real connection. People don't want to know your fluff. They don't want to know what's only good about your life. Who in here is trying to grow their business? Who in here has had a failure in their business? Who in here shares that failure with others on their social media? Wow. Wow. How do you all expect to get any real connection with anyone if you don't share your story? Why do you all think everyone wants you to be perfect? Nobody's going to do that. Kay said earlier, perfection is the enemy of progress. You don't have to worry about other people judging you for your failures. If they're judging you, then they're worse off than you are. I never judge anyone who's failed. I actually applaud those that share that failure because you know what it does? It makes us relatable. The person who helped me get to this job, Heidi, who knew Blaney, she and I were in a mastermind eight years ago. Eight years ago is the last time I saw her. But she's followed me on Facebook for the last five years. And she said, Marcus, your struggle was like mine four years ago when I lost my job. But I've seen how you kept going forward, you kept working, and I'm going to tell you my story. From being an NFL athlete to running an eight-figure business right here in downtown Baltimore to losing everything I owned in less than 90 days on a construction job, going bankrupt, broke, and almost homeless to being where I am today as a rebuilt individual, and social media, specifically LinkedIn, Help me go from the ashes to where I am now, risen out of the dust. So now it's time to know my story. That's my father on the left. That's my brother Jonathan, if you're a Ravens fan, my brother's Jonathan Ogden. Left tackle, 12 years, Hall of Famer. That's him at his high school graduation. And that's me with the part in my hair. <laughs> yes, I know, I'm chubby. It's, again, it's the late 90s. He, the picture was taken in 1992. That's where it was. I was 11 years old, and I had the same face today, just not as fat. <laughs> my brother was six foot nine in the eighth grade. 360 pounds in the eighth grade. We all knew he was going to play football. It was never a question. Me, on the other hand, I was not that big. I was only 6'3 in high school. I grew to 6'6 when I got to college. I only had one scholarship offer to go to college. Oh, I'm sorry, Howard University. That's how I went to school. I'm a Howard University grad. So the point is, though, that by going to Howard, it gave me the opportunity to go play in the National Football League. Played for six years, drafted by the Jaguars, played for the Ravens, and then finished with the Bills. After I got out of construction, excuse me, after I got out of the NFL, I ended up starting a construction business in 2008. I ended up figuring out what was I good at. And what I realized I was good at was networking, marketing, branding, getting out there. So on the left is me, on the right is my business partner. My business partner was the COO. But what we did, we took a company in 2008 that had zero dollars in revenue, and by four and a half years later, we were a multi eight-figure business, and I was the largest African-American subcontractor in the city of Baltimore and the state of Maryland for two years. How did I do that? I branded myself. I marketed myself. I went to networking events. Now, this was before that people started talking a whole lot about LinkedIn and social media. So again, that was one of my biggest failures, though. When the market went to social media marketing, I didn't think it was going to stick. So that was one of my biggest failures. 
I'm very honest about that. But before then, I worked very hard and built a business where everyone knew us as the site work king. Concrete, site work, dirt work, everything. I used everything in my power to market and brand so the business could thrive. But here's the problem. As we got successful, I got complacent. I got arrogant. I thought everything around me should revolve around me. You couldn't talk to me. You couldn't tell me anything. I was not up for hearing any type of change. If you didn't like what, what I said, you were gone. So eventually in 2012, I hit a snag where I had to spend, this job by the way is right there downtown Baltimore for Johns Hopkins on Wolf Street. So that's the parking garage, and you have the health laboratory, which is right up the street behind Johns Hopkins. That job went well. The health laboratory was the job that I worked for for Turner, worked on the job, had a snag. I spent about $3 million in less than 90 days to drive that site so the concrete contractor could build vertical. But here's the problem. When I did that extra work, because I was young, because I was impatient, because I wasn't a good leader, I was a boss, I didn't have dialogue or inclusion, I did the job without a signed change order from Turner and a developer. I shook their hand. Oh, we'll take care of it, Marcus, don't worry about it. Well, what happened was, unfortunately, the developer denied their change order, Turner then denied my change order, and this was my reality. I went bankrupt. Everything I had worked for, ladies and gentlemen, through branding, through marketing, to build my business was gone. My home was foreclosed on. Both my cars were repossessed in the same week. Both. Got down to Carolina, I had $200 in the bank that is all. Credit cards, nothing existed. Bank, no money, nothing. I was literally one week away from being homeless. My wife, or my fiance at the time, who's now my wife, uh, she was gonna go live with her mother and father. I was gonna go look at homeless, I looked at homeless shelters. That's what I thought was gonna happen. I said, there's no way I can pay next month's rent because everything I had to get from Baltimore to North Carolina is now gone. And you can't tell your landlord, oh, I'll get you next week, and you just moved in. Not gonna happen. But for, for me, God had a plan. The National Football League stepped in with what's called the Gene Upshaw Trust Fund, and they paid four months of my bills to my creditors. My rent, I ended up having to go get a car, I had to have everything I had, my light bill, water bill, was all paid by them. Now, I was working at the time at, for Merrill Lynch. Again, I marketed and branded myself. Like Blaney talked about, I called the National Football League. Hey guys, I'm in a little bit of issue here. I need to get out of Baltimore. I have a degree in finance, can you help me? And they referred me through their network to Merrill Lynch in Durham. Worked there, had a job, things were going well but because of all the pressure, because of everything going on, and I was still angry at the entire world. I never took accountability for anything at that time, nothing. I said, okay, got you a job, Marcus, was working in Durham. Two months later, I'm fired because I was not doing well on the practice test. Not their fault, mine. The next day, I got a job to a construction company. Love and Life, had a, had a, he gave me a, a company truck, company phone, laptop, gave me my first, first week's pay. Man, I'm back. Five days later, I'm fired again. Imagine telling your fiance you've been fired two times in a week. <laughs> Imagine that life. That's why my first book is called Sleepless Nights. Another story, we'll get to that in a minute. But, yeah, oh yeah, it was not fun at all. But again, so I was fired. So after that, what happened? I went back to what I knew. I trained kids in football. Again, 
marketed myself. I went on to uh, Living, uh, Living Social, got on there, started networking this, to run a camp. What happens? I was so desperate, but this tells you how good of a marketer I am, okay? I was so desperate, I started contacting people off of Living Social and started calling them and saying, hey guys, you're coming to my camp in a month. Well, by the way, I'm selling sessions of personal training, private training. Three one-hour sessions with me for $129 if you want to buy. That's what I said. In a nice way that you want to buy if you want to help with your kids. Right? I sold 15 in the first day. 15. I made a quick almost two grand. All right, cool. Now I'm working. I'm back hustling. I'm marketing. I'm networking. All this great stuff. Well, what happens? All of my kids now are playing football. It's August. I, can't, I have nobody to train. So what do I do? I marketed again to get to this point. I was a janitor. One of my kids that I trained, mother had a custodian business. She said, Marcus, I'm looking for someone for help on the graveyard shift, 10 at night to 6, to 6 a.m. If you know about it, let me know. I said, what does it pay? She said, it pays $8 an hour. I said, what are the qualifications? There are no qualifications. When can they start? Monday. I'll be the person. Took the job. She said, Marcus, the best I can give you is 825. Yes or no? I said, yes. Took the job. I worked as a janitor making $8.25 an hour. But are you seeing the pattern, ladies and gentlemen? Every time I had to, a struggle, I was down, almost out. Marketing and networking got me to give that lifeline. It kept me afloat. Did I like being a janitor? No. Was it a job? Absolutely. It was a job. People say, Marcus, how did you do that? I say, you know what? How do you pay your bills? With money? Here's your answer. I had to get something. And that's what people tell me, oh, I can't find a job. I can't find work. No, BS. You don't want to get a job that you think is beneath you. That's what it is. From the NFL to an eight-figure business owner to $8 an hour was my reality. But like Kate knows who follows me, I share a lot of that on my LinkedIn. And what does that get you? Opportunity to go and share your story and get paid to help people. Ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing wrong with failure. What's wrong is if you don't own it, fix it, and move on. That's when something happens that's wrong. So that was my reality. Now, after being a janitor, I was like, okay, cool, I'm working, I'm working, I'm working. I had my pivotal moment. Who in here has had a life-changing moment? Who, anybody know what your life-changing moment is? Right? That you've been through, that you're like, man, if I don't change, something's just going to keep going to, in a negative light, right? So mine was I was taking the trash out as a janitor on my shift about 4 o'clock in the morning. Went to go throw the trash over the dump. My glove had ripped. The bag I was throwing had ripped. All that trash, as I threw it this way, came back this way. My clothes, my skin, my body was drenched with spoiled milk, banana peels, rotten meat, you name it. The face you made is the face I was making at that time. And you know what? After that happened, I sat down on the curb. I was like, what in the hell has happened to your life, Marcus? What's going on? And you know what I realized, ladies and gentlemen? I was a culprit. I never took accountability for anything that went wrong in my life. Not one time. I always found someone to what? Blame. Every time. My partner, the contractor, the, the developer, everybody. But I was the one who did not get a signed change order. I was the one that didn't stop and say, I'm not doing this without this. So once I took accountability for my life, it started to turn around. I said, you know what? I'm going to become a speaker so I can help other people that are going through issues because we all have them. 
but the ones who share help others to get by those issues and their problems are the ones that people want to work with. So I ended up saying, I'm gonna be a speaker. For two and a half years, not one paid job. Not one. I didn't know how to leverage LinkedIn. I even never heard of LinkedIn at that time, right? I was trying to just network, network, network. I said, okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I decided to write a book. That was my best-selling book, Sleepless Nights. Talked about my autobiography. Then what happened was I started getting credibility. Back to what? Marketing and branding. I told one of my clients' fathers who worked for a Fortune 500 company, I was starting to be a speaker. If you know anybody that's looking, please let me know. I would love to speak with them. He said, Marcus, not a problem. To this day, he's one of my best friends. He gave me my first corporate job with NetApp to speak for them. Once my book came out, I started knowing about LinkedIn. I started marketing. I started working hard. Then I started getting jobs like this for Home Depot in Atlanta, Georgia on their national stage from a thousand of their leaders. Back to the point that everything you do is through marketing. I got this job because one of the Home Depot executives who was a sponsor of our academy said, hey, Marcus, we're looking for a speaker for our big conference. We'd love to have you come and do it. If I hadn't had the academy, I wouldn't have met him. Dawn, raise your hand. Stand up for a second. Dawn, how did we meet? Thank you very much. Hassan, how did we meet? OK. Bill, how did we meet? Right, right. Phil, how did we meet? Thank you. Client, business partner, business partner, client, friend. Well, I'm sorry again. Client, friend, business partner, friend, business partner, friend, client, friend. Every person that's in this room today, I met on some form of social media that came with me. That's how powerful it is. Dawn, what is the first thing that you said that you thought about me when I messaged you on LinkedIn? What did you think about me? Thank you. <laughs> right? She's like, why is this guy messaging me? Like, oh, creeper, right? But how long, Dawn, do we just continue to talk and dialogue before we start becoming friends? Right. But again, the phone call was because you told me how you felt. I was like, wow, not really. And then we became good friends, right? It's a process. It takes time. Anything worth having, you have to work for. Anything. So again, this is what I'm trying to make you guys understand. I was a janitor making $8 an hour Six and a half, well, sorry, six years ago. Six years ago, no one knew who I was, didn't care if I lived or died. They just, they saw me taking the trash out, get out of my way, you know, Jan or God, that's how they talked to me. But you know what? I just kept going. I just kept going. Ladies and gentlemen, you are going to struggle on your journey. Because if you're not struggling your journey, then it's not worth it. It's not worth it. If it's easy, anybody could do it. Being an entrepreneur, being someone that is going to go and do things, it takes that commitment. I have now written a book, and I'm now speaking on national stages. So here's my challenge to you, and this is going to be the part of my presentation where you can take notes on how to help manage for your business through social media. Okay? Are you willing to be vulnerable? Are you willing to be vulnerable? Okay, you can say it, but will you do it? Ladies and gentlemen, it is not easy to open up in the beginning on social media about your vulnerability. I'm just telling you. They're like, what's why? I don't want to know all that, right? But you keep doing it. And like I said, not trying to sell anybody. Just tell your story. Just tell your story. Don't try to sell anybody. You sell to people because they say, you presented me enough information that's valuable that I want to hire you. 
That's what it is. That's how Blaney found me. It's the same process. I don't care what you are selling. Everybody wants to know your story. And if you think that everybody hasn't struggled who's successful, think again. So if you want success, learn to be vulnerable. Three keys to developing an authentic brand. Own your story. Every one of us has a story that is unique to us. You don't have to go be anybody else. Don't worry about what your competitor is doing. Don't worry about what people say about you. I stopped caring what people thought about me a long time ago. Long time ago. If you like me, great. If you don't like me, that's fine too. You know how to work with me? But if you own your story, people will what? Respect you. Because it shows them that you're not some pompous asshole who just thinks everything they say is gold. It's being real. Be humble. Be humble. I just learned this reading a book that I just finished reading a couple days ago. Who here feels that they might be a little complacent in their journey right now? That you're kind of like complacent, okay? Who here feels that they're a humble person? Do you know that you cannot be, or it's hard to be complacent and humble? Think about that, right? If you're complacent, you feel that where you are is where you are and where you need to be. Now, I mean, not because you're not, you're, not, you're not annoying where you're to a point where you're like, think everything is gold, or you're not being complacent because you're arrogant, you might be fearful. That's okay. But understand, if you are complacent, you cannot be humble. Because when you're humble, you're always wanting to what? Grow, evolve, develop, move forward. If you're complacent, you're stuck. From either your own fear, oh, did I hit that? That's awesome. From either your own fear or whatever the case may be. And most of the time, ladies and gentlemen, it's the fear of the unknown to why you are complacent. Or the fear of other people doing what? Talking about you and your journey. But think about that. So be humble, don't be complacent. Even if you have to move slow towards your goals, just keep moving. And don't stop. And be consistent. I can't tell you how many times you heard it today. And it's right on point. Because everything you do takes time. So these are three things to developing an authentic brand for social media. Own your story. Be humble. Be consistent. Right? The four platforms that I post on. Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk to you about, the, to me, there are four main categories that you, what I call, falls into content buckets. Business, community, family, miscellaneous. Business is pretty straightforward. What are you about? What value do you have? What is the foundation of your brand? Who is involved in the business? Right? It's all of those things that make up the product that you are trying to what? Distribute to a consumer. But like Kate said earlier, you have to be consistent and clear on what your business is. Otherwise, people won't know what you do. And I tell my clients this all the time. Don't be the best product that nobody has ever heard of. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are a great brand, but you have no marketing, you will not succeed. People can't buy if they know you exist. Community, that falls into what do you like outside of your business? Boys and Girls Club, YMCA. What type of community initiatives are you doing that make you more than just someone who's all about business? People want to get to know you and what you like because if they know what you like and it might relate to them, 
That's a connection to do business potentially. So understand community is very important. Family, been married for almost five years. I have two daughters, 15, almost 16, good Lord, and a five-year-old, right? Okay, thank you. Two, so I've got four girls in the house, my wife, my five-year-old, my 15-year-old, and our dog. I'm screwed, okay? I'm, I'm all by myself. But the family, what that does, ladies and gentlemen, you don't understand the family connection of you sharing it helps you to build with other people. John, we've been connecting on social media for a while. You always see my daughters on there, my wife, things like that. And what does that do? What is, how does that make you think about me as a person, businessman, all that? How do you think that makes you feel when you see like my family in pictures? Oh, you've got the support group that's there that's behind you and you're behind whatever they're doing, all of that. Stuff. Right, and it shows that it, three dimensional. You're three dimensional. it makes me real. It's three dimensional, exactly. It shows the different type of person, things that I have and how real I am to my family, exactly. And what do people want to know when they're buying from you? How real are you? Ladies and gentlemen, I heard some, the guy who spoke before said, what do you have different that people want to do business with you? Everybody that you're competing against, for the most part, sell the same product. The ones who are doing business are the ones that are sharing it. You said it earlier, Kate, about three million people only are posting on LinkedIn out of how many hundreds of millions? Just like less than 1%, right? Less than 1%. The people that are sharing that content, getting booked for business. The ones that aren't, are just sitting by the sidelines watching. The choice is yours. The choice is yours. Miscellaneous. So for me, what do you like to do as a hobby? Right? I like to go to the gym. I like to lift weights. I like to play poker. I like to go to the movies. What is something that you do that's not business, that's not community, that's not your family, that shows people that you like to do as a hobby? Again, one of my biggest sponsors for my first football academy, back to marketing, we connected because I talked about I want to go hunting one day. He said, oh, Marcus, I own land about an hour and a half away. What do you say? Boom. Oh, by the way, Marcus, here's a check for $2,500 to support your brand. I didn't even ask for it. The fact that I, show, I put on Facebook, I like to hunt. If anybody knows anybody, he said, I'm your guy. Oh, by the way, Marcus, I love your brand, what you're doing. Here's a check for $2,500. I support your football academy. Great, right? If I didn't post that, we would, I would not have got him as a sponsor. So these are the four things that I feel make up content buckets where you can drop different types of picture images or videos to share with your audience and potential consumers to connect with you, right? If they're connecting with you, they're probably gonna have a good chance of buying from you. And that's how you grow your network. So here's an example, business. Servant leadership will get you so far in life. All right, in this short video, ask someone asked me this question, I'm coming to a new management position with an existing team, et cetera, et cetera, right? So what do I do? Ladies and gentlemen, when you're writing a caption, right, what are you trying to explain? How do you write a caption? Any, show, any hands, does anybody want to you know, step in? Yes, ma'am. Okay, very good. All right, anybody else? Sir? Generate curiosity, very good. Anything, anything else? Add emotion. Add emo who said that? Add emotion, very good. Of course you know the answer. All right, but anyway, so ladies and gentlemen, what you're really trying to do more than anything else is get people to do what? Put themselves in your post. Put, your, put themselves in what you are saying. Look at that top line. Servant leadership will get you so far in life. What is the one word that's capitalized in that top line? Me. Who am I talking to when I wrote that? Me. Anybody that's reading it. Anybody that's reading it. It says you. So when I do that, you know what people do? It gets people to stop and say, you, that could be me. 
Let me read this, right? Now, how many likes are at the bottom of that, of that post? 163. Almost 5,000 views, right? It took me a minute to write the caption, post it on LinkedIn, right? 162 people liked it, 30 comments, almost 5,000 views. The one thing I sucked at before about a year and a half ago, I was horrible at caption writing. Horrible. I talked about me, me. Look how great I am, how great I am, right? And what did it get me? Nothing. Zero. People want to know what is in it for them when they're reading. If you can capture them by that, you got them. If you start saying, well, look how great I am, I'm this, this, and this, and this, and if you want to do something, you know, give me a call, I'm your guy. They're just going to go, all right, I'll buy you. I don't want to work with you because you're telling me you're not concerned about what I might need by reading your post. So this is proof, ladies and gentlemen, that you want to write the caption geared towards the person who is reading it because that will get them to stop and say, I want to find out more. Community. This is when I got hired, okay? Well, not hired, excuse me. This is when I was at a, uh, an event. My good friend is the chief of police of Roxboro, North Carolina. Small little town, North Carolina. A lot of tension, black and white. A lot of racism down there. Just tension, right? So what does he try to do? He holds a talk at a barber shop. He said, Marcus, I need a favor. Please come to this event. Just come give some support. I said, Chief Hess, no problem. I'll be right there. <laughs> Hour and each way round trip. Ladies and gentlemen, he just hired me to speak for him next January at the North Carolina Association of Chief of Polices. 350 police chiefs and their vendors. Right? Now I'm going to tell you right now, if I had not done things like that for him, and I've known him for six years, but I supported him, networked, went out, posted about it, and it drew what? Positive publicity to his department, to what he's trying to do. It's a community event, right? And you had the police officer staying behind me, me sitting down, and someone who's talking at the door about what's going on. It shows community. It took me two, took three hours of my day to support a friend, and now I'm speaking for him in January. Networking, networking takes time. If you expect quick results, don't even bother doing it. Okay? That's my baby girl. Okay? Family. No matter what she does uh, bad today, she gets all that kiss pass from her dad. Right? Ladies and gentlemen, people love to see people like this. When I see someone with their children or their spouse or something where they're just promoting positivity, I want to stop. I want to support it automatically. Because I'm so tired of seeing such negativity on social media. When I see something positive, I automatically stop and like it. I don't even have to read it. I don't have to read it because it's positive. It's uplifting. This society is so much of like me, 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 me. Yes, we have to make money, but also there's a human side to life. Learn to embrace that. So that is, and now people know my daughter and know that that is going to be one of my whys to succeed. So that helps build a bridge. Okay, miscellaneous. I like going to the gym. Some people say, why do I take a picture of you in the gym? It's because it shows things I like to do to stay healthy, and it's just another way to connect with people. I've done talks for health conferences because of this. You never know who is looking at your wall. You never know. So you might as well post different types of content to help get people to say, I want to work, talk to that person. I want to work with that person. But if you keep posting the same boring, mundane, buy my product, 
here I am, here's my office, you will get the same results all the time, all the time. People want to see different stuff and they want things that have emotion, not just things that have a product. So now I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to show you the percentages of what I post for my content on each platform. So on Facebook, it's 40% business, 30% community, 20% family, 10% miscellaneous. I have found this pattern to be very useful for me on Facebook. Because Facebook is where you have a lot of friends and things like that, but you also have people who are wanting to do business. Not as much as on LinkedIn, but still a good platform for business. But you have to mix it up. Again, this is exactly how I got here. Heidi connected with me on Facebook. And then Blaney went to my Facebook and saw my website, checked it out, here we are today. But it's a mix. It's not the same stuff. So I, through studies and data, I have found for our business and others that I've coached, has been very successful with posting content on Facebook. LinkedIn, predominantly business, 60%. 60% business. 20% community, 10% family, 10% miscellaneous. Now, some people I've heard say LinkedIn is all business. That's fine. That's fine. Depending on what you are selling. But I would encourage you to still try to mix in some other content. Even though they're business owners on LinkedIn, those business owners are still what? human beings, right? I'm doing a job for Cisco next month as a speaker. The guy said, Marcus, I love on how on LinkedIn you have such diverse content. You're not someone always trying to sell something. You're not always someone promoting your business. You're promoting your family, what you like, the community. People just need to know that you're not all about business, even on LinkedIn. Again, this is what has worked for me and the clients that I coach, helping them one-on-one -on -one every week to grow and scale their business. And I believe it can work for you in the same light. Instagram, 50% business, 20% community, 20% family, 10% miscellaneous. I definitely do use Instagram stories. They are very effective. I have the swipe up model, which helps out a lot. But what I'll tell you is on Instagram, videos tend to do a lot better because of the demographic of who's on there. So when I post about business, it's a good mix of picture content and videos. Now, Instagram makes it this way. Who here posts videos on social media? Okay. How long are those videos usually? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you this. This is from, again, from my research, from my business and people I work with. A minute or under is the sweet spot. People's attention spans are what? Short, short. They don't have the time to watch a five minute video that you post. So every time I go and speak, I have great guys that do the film. We do three things. We take a full video cut, we take a one minute cut, and we take a three to five minute cut. The three to five minute cut is for my website. The full is just for my archive. The one minute is always for social media, always. Because what am I trying to do? I'm trying to drive you to where? My website. Or to email me to have a conversation. So if you're on LinkedIn posting three to four minute videos and you wonder why you might not have a lot of likes or views, it might be too long. People just want you to get to the point. Get to the point. All right. So again, this is what I use for Instagram. Twitter, 45% business, 
30% community, 20% family, 5% miscellaneous. Twitter, in my opinion, and from what I have seen, is the biggest one for community when it comes to people who want to read something quick, quick, quick. Tweet, tweet, tweet. It's very hard to post a lot about miscellaneous other things because people are always what? Moving, moving. So I don't post as many videos on Twitter as I do on Instagram or LinkedIn. Again, what are you trying to do? You're trying to make a connection with that audience. And when you're doing that, it's important to know what do people on that platform usually make up? What is the makeup? Is it younger? Is it older? Is it business? Is it not? If you know these things, it can what? Give you an advantage on how and when and what to post. It's that simple. But it takes what? Time. It takes what? An effort. You have to do that. There's three types of marketing I tell people all the time you need to be doing. Email marketing, social media marketing, face-to-face -face networking. The easiest one to do is social media, but it's usually the least done by people. Because why? It takes time. It takes time. It takes time. And also, what does it take? Patience. Oh, I posted a video, I only had two likes. Phil, when we started, Phil, good friend of my client, when we started with your social media about six months ago, how many likes were you averaging when you started? How about now? You get pretty good engagement, don't you? People are liking your stuff. They're commenting, they're interacting. You know why, Phil? Because they're seeing you every single day consistently putting out different stuff. Pictures, videos, talking, non-for-profit, community, leadership talks. When we met, you weren't doing that. And I remember you said, Marcus, man, it's discouraging some days because I'm not getting much traction. I said, Phil, keep going, keep going. Around month four, I was getting a little bit better. Keep going. Now at month six, you're rolling. And it's only getting better. Most people will quit because they don't see the immediate results. If you want immediate results, go play the lottery. Yep. Right. You always gonna probably lose. Right. And what happens when we win the lottery? They usually go broke anyway. Okay, because they know how to handle the money. So if you want something quick, to the point, make macaroni and cheese. If you want a business, build it. Build it. All right? Five principles for effective branding. Always strive to be a better leader. Not a boss, a leader. Be someone that when they stop on your social media platform, they say, damn, that was a great post. Damn, that inspired me. Man, what great content. Finally, somebody that's not talking all about themselves. You want to inspire people to create a platform or an audience. When you have an audience, they will what? Eventually buy your products. Learn to inspire others. Motivation is short term, inspiration for the long haul. If you want to have a long-standing business, inspire people. You want to be here today, gone tomorrow, motivate them. It's up to you. There's a difference. There's a difference. Always be open to your own growth and development. Don, how many times would you say on a week we might have a tit or a fight about how we do things for the brand because sometimes I'm bullheaded every once in a while, don't agree sometimes. Well, how, how often would you say that? How, say, wow, bad answer. Um, so I was going to say more like you know, more like you know, one every couple of weeks. But it used to be in the beginning like three or four a week. The point is, as you start to trust your team, you have to grow and develop and let them do their job. If you're going to hire someone to work with you or put them on your team, you have to do what? You have to learn to let them lead also. You have to. 
You can't be a micromanager. It's called decentralized command. Learning to let people lead from other places who have the credentials to do so. But you can only do that if you're open to growth and development. Manage your time. Who here gets overwhelmed sometimes trying to put out content or trying to grow their business? Write this down, please. All right? Number one, you have to relax. Number two, you have to process. And three, you have to make a decision. Anytime people make a decision under distress, it's usually what? A bad decision. With Caden, man, Marcus, do this, this, do this site dry or else. I'm like, all right, here I come, here I come. And I say, yes. I should have stopped, processed, and said, I'm not doing this without a change order. That's what I should have done. But I was young, I made a bad decision under stress. So again, relax, <laughs> process, make an informed decision. Always hold yourself accountable. If you don't take ownership of your own life, don't expect anybody else to respect you. It is paramount and key. These are five principles to help you with effective branding. And that should come through through consistent social media positive posting. Any questions uh, from, on anything? Before I, uh, for on, on anything? Of course. Okay. I'm not a big fan of Facebook. Okay. My friends are from my high school. All right. I know you have a five thousand. I do. I took the the thought process that my friends I can reach out and touch me. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people have thousands and thousands of friends. Mm -hmm. Is that good? Great question. So you can never have enough friends on your Facebook because that becomes your audience that in some token could potentially buy from you. I don't talk to all 5,000 people on my Facebook. I would go crazy doing that. But what I do is my close friends I have strong connections with on the phone, email, direct message, and then the other people that are on my Facebook that might just follow my work as I'm posting. Okay, Randy. That is how my book became a bestseller. When I posted on my Facebook in 2015, everyone, my book has been released, please go and buy it. It became a bestseller in two hours. I will tell you, everyone that bought a book was not my, well, I don't really know personally, but they supported my mission, my vision, and it's like building yourself a community. So just be strategic and manage your time on who you speak with, but it doesn't hurt to have good people that's following you because that'll help you with your platform. Yes, Don. Well, let me go ahead and address that. You don't talk about 5,000, but if someone contacts you, you'll be able to. Okay, great point. If, if, that's absolutely correct. If someone takes the time to comment on one of your posts or sends you a message, definitely connect, connect and converse with them. Because what that does, it builds a authentic relationship or bond with that person. Anytime someone comments on my LinkedIn post or message me, I always get back to them within 24 hours. That's probably within like two minutes. You texted me directly. Like I think I connected with you on LinkedIn, sent you a message. Hey, we're speaking together. It's cool. I'm going to meet you. I, I almost immediately got a text. I'm like, honey, look. It's my husband. An NFL player. <laughs> 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 oh, that's awesome. But again, it, it built what it does, Don, it, like you said, it builds that authentic, like you're not just some person behind the social media. You're actually a real person that they can connect with and share with. Great point. Yes. Uh, so my question is about 
your Facebook page and then your Facebook business page. All right. It sounds like a lot of the stuff you're doing with your followers is on your regular page. Mm -hmm. How do you decide what to put where? Because I have a lot more friends, but sometimes I feel like I don't want to overload too much business stuff on my friends and I want to keep that on my business page. So I post this. Here's the thing. Posting about your business on both platforms is fine. That's not going to drive anybody away. They're going to support you. But the caption writing has to be something that what that really touches them. Does that make sense? Like people keep saying, well, I don't want to overload people on, on businesses. And that. Well, look, people want to see you doing stuff, right? But what they don't want to read is how it's all about you, 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 you. How is your content inspiring them? So be consistent posting on your business and your personal. If you want to post a little bit more family on your personal, that's okay. But it's not gonna dis it's not gonna disconnect you from people by posting your business stuff on your personal page. What will disconnect the audience if your caption writing is not geared towards helping inspire them, right? I had a friend who I haven't talked to in years. He said, Marcus, I just want you to know. Every time I wake up in the morning, I know at 5 a.m. there's a post from you. Yeah, I post at 5 a.m. on my way to the gym every morning. He said, I read it. He said, we've been friends for a while, but every time I read your post, it inspires me to keep going when I've had a really bad day. So keep doing it. Keep putting it out there. I had no idea he was even looking. You have no idea. But you have to keep putting it out there. He said, when I read your caption, it speaks to me personally. Even though you're not talking to me, I feel like you're talking to me. And that's what you want. If you can get that, you're gonna have a very successful business. Ma'am? Thank you so much to everyone. Everyone is so kind. Love this information. I have a new business in Nevada. <laughs> and then oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I got a, a pit bull puppy. <laughs> Absolutely. So no, don't rebrand yourself. Just what you have, just do it right. It takes too much time to rebrand yourself and you're going to lose followers. And here's the thing, as you start, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I had, a, I had a coaching client who said, Marcus, it's great to see my business grow, but it's great, it's even greater to see my business coach grow. Me, right? People want to see you growing and developing. If you haven't made mistakes in a business, I don't want to work with you because it's coming. At some point, it's coming. So if it's coming, I'm trying to avoid shit. It's like the Titanic. I'm not going down with you. I'm over here. So if I know you've had a failure, man, let's talk. Because you know why I know? That you have gone through something. Phil, what did you tell me that why you hired me? Do you remember what you told me? I know. So you know what you told me, dude, that I love? You said, Marcus. No offense, Marcus, but I'm paying you to avoid your mistakes, <laughs> right? I said, I'm paying you to avoid your mistakes. If you haven't made mistakes in business, man, like I said, put me over here, the Titanic's going down because it's coming, right? I want to know what if you had grit. It's kind of like I tell people all the time, who, I love Rocky, okay? Yvonne Drago knocks Rocky down. What's he keep doing? Getting back up, getting back up. I had a chance to meet a guy um, um, who fought Muhammad Ali. Oh God, I can't remember his, it's so, I can't remember his name. Um, oh, that's so bad. Uh, I met him out in a, uh, in a, an event in uh, Vegas. And no, not Frazier. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll think of him in a second. Oh, oh, no, Ernie Shavers, Ernie Shavers. And I had a chance to talk to Ernie Shavers, he said, you know, we said, Marcus, I really like our interaction. You're a good guy. I said, Mr. Shavers, can I ask you a question? He said, yeah. I said, how does it feel to almost really beat the greatest fighter ever, Muhammad Ali? He said, Marcus, I'm going to tell you this. I knocked him down twice. The second time when he got up, I wasn't expecting it. It blew me away. He said, I hit Ali. And Ali even said, Ernie Shavers was the hardest puncher he ever fought, ever. 
He said, Marks, when I knocked him down, I was over in the corner like Gary do my, my new champ dance. I was ready to roll. And I, at standing eight, Ali got up. He was like, oh, Lord. I gave him the best shot. He got up. And he said, the minute he told himself that, the minute he knew that the fight was over, he was going to lose. And he lost to Ali. Knocked him down twice, still lost. So in business, I want to know, have you been knocked down? And if you've been knocked down, you can get the hell up, we can talk. So again, don't rebrand yourself. Own the mistakes, fix the mistakes, move on. Sir? Do you have a branding statement on your website or maybe a business card? And I'm thinking of a branding statement, something akin to a tagline. Yes, ours is we inspire you to take accountability. That's what it is. And we worked on it, we discussed it back and forth. We thought inspiration was a great buzzword, and accountability is what everyone in corporate America and everybody in life wants. If you're not accountable to yourself or to your business or to your clients, you will lose those people in an instant. Yes, ma'am. So again, let's go back to um, let's go back to this post here. Okay, so so basically this this post here, right? So it's a talk that is a video. So what I will do, depending on I don't do it all the time. I do it very strategically. I'll put at the bottom of this post. If you're looking for a speaker or you'd like to connect, please click on our website or please shoot me an email. And let's and let's talk. I do that probably one out of every like four or five, so it's not coming across salesy, but it's still dropping that little bit of a cheese for the mouse to come and get and say, all right, let's talk. So it's a strategic plan, right? You cannot do it all the time, all the time, because what's gonna happen is they're gonna be like, damn, here she is again trying to sell something. But doing it like 20% of the time, it's a little, it's a little, it's kind of it's a little implant will help you immensely grow your business. Ma'am? Well, and just like you see up here, it says keynote speaker. So it, when, just like Kate was talking about earlier, when you really um, form this headline and tag it to you everywhere it goes, it goes with you. And so that's your way of kind of saying it without always saying it. Kind of thing, right? uh, absolutely. I mean, tell you, you want to be a speaker, right? Yes. What do you want to speak on? Okay, so basically you're gonna help people and you wanna speak on your story and your personal you know, journey. Yes. Great, so can you read on the top line, right? Current best-selling author, person I can't, what is the word up there that you think relates best to what you should probably do for your headliner? Well, I'm an author, so okay. I need to make sure I add that. Uh, what's up here? Well, well, personality. Thank you, that's it. Mel Robbins told me something in March of 2018. He said, Marcus, everybody wants to be this, this huge guru, right? This Tony Robbins, which is great. I think it's phenomenal. But there's so many people out there claiming to be that. Be a personality, which means you are one and only you. Don't try to be anybody else. Don't compete against anybody. Be your personality. <laughs> When you say you're a personality keynote speaker, it tells people, okay, I'm getting a personality with a story that can help inspire. I don't want to have somebody who's like, well, I think I know this and I know that. Well, great. So is everybody else claims to do that. So don't drop yourself with a million other people. Drop yourself with yourself. That's going to help you grow your business too. Anybody else? Well, you guys, we're gonna wrap it up. Yep, yep. So my final thought is this. Uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, so final. No, this, this thing will move a little bit faster. 
My bad. Final thought, it's just, it's just gonna be clear as day. People don't buy your accomplishments, they buy you. Oops. <laughs> Again, ladies and gentlemen, when you're trying to sell someone on something, right, or start a conversation, don't lead with what you've accomplished. They don't care. They want to know what can you do, what value you can provide to help them accomplish a goal. If they ask you for credentials, then share your accomplishments with them to what? Create credibility, like the last speaker said, and create that viable business brand that they want to hire. But if you lead with your accomplishments, it could turn people off. So lead with the value you can provide people if they ask you how you can do it, give them your credentials and your accomplishments, you're good. Thank you. Name is John Barker, Barker Management Consulting. Literally just walked out of the room hearing Marcus Ogden give a keynote speech on branding. Absolutely fantastic. If you are looking for somebody to work with, be a keynote speaker for your event, you can't go wrong. That the, everybody was on the edge of their seats waiting to hear what was next for one of the most authentic and powerful stories you will ever hear in your life. Extremely transparent, extremely transparent, no fluff. All the lows as well as coming back to the highs. So definitely give Marcus a shot if you're looking for a fantastic keynote speaker. Hi everyone, I'm Brianna with Emerging Moda. We make merch for fashion startups. And Marcus is incredible. Like immediately as soon as I met him at his speaking engagement, he made me feel like his best friend. He was so down to earth and just, hey, this is what's going on. He talked about his life, how he can help, and I saw that it's a reality. Like, your dreams can come true when you listen to what he's saying because he actually cares. You know, it's not this extra Facebook ads, business ads put in your face, but he seriously cares about not only your business, but your family, your community. Like, he just seems like a friend immediately, and seriously, that's so important to me, and I hope it's important to you too. So. I totally recommend Marcus and listen to what he has to say because it's incredible. His PowerPoint presentation was on point. He had so many good things to say and he really just cared deep down from his heart and his story was so incredible and inspiring and I hope he can help you too. Hey everyone, my name is Phil Yacinth from The Fulfill Company and um, you know I'm here to just talk about Marcus Ogden. Uh, he's a, a really, really good friend of mine. Uh, he actually, he and I actually connected on LinkedIn and uh, my background's actually in sports, so you know I was actually attracted to seeing um, just his vulnerability from his success to making it to the NFL and being a, a very successful businessman. And I just loved his vulnerability, and um, you know it was something I struggled in within my company. And initially, before I met Marcus, um, a lot of great things weren't really going on with with my company in terms of um, just you know opportunities and, and sales. And uh, he and I connected on LinkedIn. I saw what he was posting. I saw the incredible things he was posting and um, because of that you know my business has um, you know really picked up because of his insight his coaching his mentorship um, you know he's really stressed consistency and he's really um, really encouraged me to really focus on the different type of content I'm putting on there and um, like I said because of him I've had a lot of success so if you get an opportunity to work with Marcus trust me reach out to him He's just an awesome coach, not just on an executive level, but just on a, a people level. Great person, and I would highly, highly recommend reaching out to Marcus, Marcus Ogden.